G'day there, you're watching the Aussie Beam Guru, and today you've reached uh, the next part of my Python for Dynamo series, and in this one we're looking at the API again. Um, this time we're going to look at an example of putting views on sheets. So um, we've looked at some fundamentals previously, and we're going to continue with the API, and then continue on to some more advanced functions after that. <clears throat> so views to sheets. So we're going to be doing a similar sort of workflow to the last video, but looking at some reinforcement of what we've learned <clears throat> and looking again at just how to navigate the Revit API docs, because um, that's really important to get used to when you build Python scripts. Um, so I'm going to use this as like a reinforcement session, um, but also a helpful workflow. So let's get started. So we're going to be looking at what's called the viewport class. So when a view is placed on a sheet in Revit, as most of you probably already know, it's called a viewport. So we're going to be looking for this class specifically. Um, so we're going to start on the Revit API docs uh, like we did last time. So I'm just going to search for viewport and you can see I've got a viewport class available. I'm going to be creating viewports or placing viewports. I think when I first looked here, I was looking for place. Um, so I went down to P and had no luck, um, so I went up and looked at create. And sure enough, we have a static method for creating viewports. So in this case, we can use the viewport class and the method of create um, with some variables. So let's inspect what the method expects. So the method expects a document. So in this case, this will be our active document or doc as we're gonna call it. Um, then the view sheet ID and the view ID. So again, we'll do a similar thing to our last session where we call on the variable of sheet <coughs> or view dot id so we'll get their id and then we're looking at a special thing here so we're looking at an xyz so an xyz is a point within revit not within dynamo so it's really important to understand this class it's a special class so we're going to need to convert an object to xyz uh, when we when we create it so in this case you can see that xyz is one option and xyz bracket is another one so we can actually convert um, to XYZ. And we can also apply this as a method. Um, I don't know if 2XYZ is going to be on here, but 2XYZ is the function we need. Um, it doesn't look like it's available. I'll see if it's actually on API docs. Hmm, it doesn't look like it is. So it might be a Revit nodes function. Yeah, because that is the function or the method we're going to be applying to our point from Dynamo to get it back into Revit. Okay, so let's get started. So we're just going to jump into Revit and Dynamo. So I'm just in a model um, with a few particular things set up. I'll just reframe my Revit so you can see my banner. Cat's getting hungry. Come on. All right, there we go. So we're in Revit and we have two sheets and we have a sheet with a view placed on it. And we want to place two other views in the same position on other sheets. So we're going to be dealing with a list of sheets, a list of views, and a point in this case. So we're going to be getting the location of the center of this viewport. So I've already done just a little bit of work in Dynamo for my inputs. So I'm using um, Genius Loci's view by name node, and I'm using uh, Crumple or my packages sheet by number node. And then I'm using the viewport box center from Rhythm. Um, so this one uses zero touch nodes and these ones both use Python. Um, so in this case, I've got a list with two views and I've got a list with two sheets and I'm getting the actual Dynamo element of the plans and the sheets. On top of that, I'm getting the viewport from this sheet. So I'm selecting it as a model element and I'm getting its box center as a Dynamo point. So this is gonna be my reference point. So let's get started, I guess. So the first thing we're gonna do is obviously we're gonna open Python. We're gonna make a Python script. So we have three inputs. We have our views, our sheets, and our point. So we'll feed these in. And I'm just gonna to go to manual mode. We'll add our sheets and we'll add our box center. And you may remember from my last tutorial, um, I have a, a default Python template, um, which I covered in the first part of this series, um, how you can set this up. So we're just going to keep all these references for now and keep pressing forward. So we're just going to begin uh, by taking away a few things that aren't important. So we're going to just take away the UI references again, and also just the UI and the Revit API UI. We'll keep everything else for now and then we'll look at it at the end. 
Um, so the, the first thing we will need is we will need our active documents. We are calling on the document manager dot instance dot current db document and assign this to the variable doc. So you'll do this in a lot of scripts at the moment. So what we're going to be doing now is we're going to be getting our views as one input and our sheets as another. And again, this, this may not always be um, a list. So what we're going to do is just build a function. We're going to reinforce how to build a function in, in here. So we're going to define an unwrapped list in this case, because we're going to want to unwrap our views and our sheets as well. So our function is going to both unwrap our elements and turn them into a list if they're not already a list. So let's just call this UW list for unwrap list. And all it takes is an input. The first thing we need to do is make sure it's a list. So we're just going to define a local variable called two lists. And we're just going to say input if is instance input, checking if it's a list else. We're going to put input in a list. We're going to go to a new line and we're going to define our unwrapped variable as unwrapped element to list in this case. So we're defining this as a function. Um, I believe you can unwrap lists as well, but this ensures that whatever we unwrap to is an iterable element. So in this case, we're going to apply this instead. So we're going to say views equals to unwrapped list, our function. And actually we need to return something. So we're going to return unwrap. So we're going to unwrap list on input zero, our views. And then sheets, we're going to unwrap list on input one, our sheets. And then we're going to take our point. We'll just call it point in. So it's a point as it's coming in. Or we could call it uh, maybe point D for dynamo point. And then we're going to unwrap this as well. Because we want to convert this into a point in Revit that we can use in the API. So we're going to unwrap this point. And then we'll make point underscore R for our Revit point point in, so our variable we've just defined, and we're going to convert this to XYZ. So that is the method um, that you can apply to a point from Dynamo to make it a workable point in Revit. Um, so we're going to move on from here. And the next thing we need to do is we're going to undertake a transaction. So we could at this point run, I'll just make my output one and run and just make sure we have no warnings. 145. Uh, I need to call this point underscore D. Uh, what else have I done? Has no attribute. Uh, so I think in this case, I've got all the references I need. So something funny going on here. Hmm. I think I've typed my function name wrong. So I think it's, yeah, it's lowercase yz, that's why. So now we find the function. So it's really important that case is always correct in your script. Um, so you can see that sometimes troubleshooting is really important as you go through the script. But let's keep going. So we're doing a transaction now. So we're going to keep our line for transaction manager instance, ensuring transaction, and we're going to call in our document variable. And from there, we're going to just proceed into our transaction. So we're going to call on a list of viewports to populate. So we want to output the viewports we create. And we'll just make an empty list. And we're going to iterate again, but we're going to use a zip iteration over two variables. So we're going to go for V, S for view and sheet as local variables in our iteration. In zip, I'm going to call on our views and our sheets, which remember these are unwrapped. So we're going to call in. We're going to import and we're going to make a check. So we're going to check if the view can be placed on the sheet. So there's two ways you could do this. The first way I looked at doing it was using a try and accept statement. Um, but I was advised that a better way to do it is to use a actual API command. Um, in this case, if we go to our viewport class, there is a method we can use to check this. So if I go to methods, there's a method called can add view to sheet. So this essentially checks if you can add a viewport to a sheet. Um, in this case, we call on it with the viewport because it's a static method. And we use can add view to sheet as our method. And we call on the document, the view sheet, and the view by ID. So in this case, I'm just going to take this statement here. And this will be a condition. So we're going to make a condition. So we're going to say that check is equal to viewport, because static, dot can add view to sheet. We're going to call on our current document, which is doc. We're going to call on S as our local variable as a sheet. 
we're going to get its ID with dot ID and then the same for the view. So this will build up a boolean that we can use to check. Let's just say if check is true, we're going to build two options. So obviously if it can be added to the sheet, we're going to add it to the sheet. If it can't be added to the sheet, we'll build a message that says view cannot be placed. So in this case, we're going to create a viewport. So we're going to assign our create a viewport to a variable so that we can append it to a list at the end. So we're going to say that view VP for a viewport equals viewport dot create. So we're calling on this method that we found on API docs. So remember, we found the create method. So we're calling on the document, we're calling on the sheet ID, the view ID, and this XYZ point. So we can say that we're calling on doc, we're calling on the sheet by ID, the view by ID, and then we're calling on point from Revit. So this is our XYZ point back here. So we're calling on just a global variable to apply to all the views, in this case, just two of them. And then we're going to take our viewports list and we're going to append VP to the list. We still have to handle our else. So if it can't be placed on the sheet, which it typically is because it's already placed on a sheet or the same sheet, we're going to get our viewports append and we're going to say that view cannot be placed as a string. Now you could make this a null, you could make it anything you want, whatever's easy for you to process on the other side of the node. I'm just going to use the string because it's easier for a user to understand what's happening. When we're done, we need to finish our transaction. So we call on the transaction manager, instance transaction task done. And that tells Revit that we're finished with using the queue of operations. And out, of course, will just be our list of viewports. So we'll assign viewports. So I'm just really quickly going to make sure everything looks okay here, just to make sure I haven't mismatched any variables, but I think it's looking like it should work. So we're using check here. Yeah, cool. Okay, so now what we should expect to see if we run this is that we should see our views get placed on the sheet. So I'm just going to make Dynamo a little bit smaller so it's out of the way so we can actually see it happen. And let's just run. Cool, and you can see it's matched the point as that Revit XYZ and it's placed the views on the sheets. So really powerful. And if you wanted to build the script a little bit differently, so if you wanted to have the same number of points for the number of views and the number of sheets, let's say you're placing lots of views in lots of different places, um, it would just be as easy as just changing your script so that instead of just calling on a global point um, that, that's used in the local function, you could create the same sort of list. You could unwrap the list and then convert it to XYZ after. Um, and then you could also just add it as an extra variable in your zip iteration to place each view on each sheet by each point. Um, and then that would be the same function essentially. If you do want to see this node, it's actually contained in my package under crumple revit uh, views. And I've got view to sheet by point, which is what we've just built. And I've also got view to sheet by points, which is basically what I just discussed with the, the same list of points as for the views. So when you finish it and put it into a custom node, it looks a little bit like that. And obviously you can go and detail what each various input of your script is saying. So in this case, I've got some views and sheets and it's telling the user that there's one point for multiple. So it's good to inform the user how the script works as well. But that's pretty much it. Um, so a really quick little example just to reinforce what we learned. Um, we're going to continue just with a couple of more API examples um, because I think it's important to reinforce um, a few times before we move on to some other techniques. So in the next one, we're going to look at a little bit more of an abstract class, which is the view sun settings of a view, um, which is another challenge I've tackled in Python uh, recently. Um, so it'll show you a little bit more about how to set properties of elements as well. And just a reminder, my package is on GitHub at this link if you're interested in downloading it and trying it out. So thanks for watching today. I, I make videos about two to three times a week. Um, so if you're not already following and subscribing, feel free to do so. Um, and thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks, take care, bye.